we'll now read a story titled The Beggar, written by Anton Chekhov. You see, Anton Chekhov was born into a family of modest means and peasant ancestry. But in spite of this, he received a good education wherein he studied medicine at Moscow University and graduated as a physician in 1884. He also supported his family by writing short stories for newspaper publications. It was after he began writing more serious and more artistic stories that he gained the attention of the public and the critics. Today, he is recognized as one of the world's most important writers of plays and short stories. Also, the first edition of his complete works was published between 1900 and 1903. Now, the story The Beggar is a story from his collection, The Complete Short Stories Collection. It is a story about an encounter between an alcoholic beggar and a well-to-do advocate which results in the advocate providing the beggar with a job. But will the beggar be able to mend his ways? Let's read the story and find out. The Beggar by Anton Chekhov Kind sir, have pity. Turn your attention to a poor hungry man. For three days I have had nothing to eat. I haven't five kopecks for a lodging. I swear it before God. For eight years I was a village school teacher and then I lost my place through intrigues. I fell a victim to calumny. It is a year now since I have had anything to do. The advocate, Sergei, looked at the ragged, fawn-coloured overcoat of the suppliant, at his dull, drunken eyes, at the red spot on either cheek, and it seemed to him as if he had seen this man somewhere before. I have now had an offer of a position in the province of Kaluga. The mendicant went on. But I haven't the money to get there. Help me kindly. I am ashamed to ask, but I am obliged to by circumstances. Sergei's eyes fell on the man's overshoes, one of which was high and the other low, and he suddenly remembered something. Look here. It seems to me I met you the day before yesterday in Sadovia Street, he said. But you told me then that you were a student who had been expelled and not a village school teacher. Do you remember? No, 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 that can't be so, mumbled the beggar, taken aback. I am a village school teacher and if you like, I can show you my papers. Have done with lying. You called yourself a student and even told me what you had been expelled for, don't you remember? Sergei flushed and turned from the ragged creature with an expression of disgust. This is dishonesty, my dear sir, he cried angrily. This is swindling. I shall send the police for you, damn you. Sir, he said, laying his hand on his heart. The fact is, I was lying. I am neither a student nor a school teacher. All that was fiction. Formerly, I sang in a Russian choir and was sent away for drunkenness. But what else can I do? I can't get along without lying. No one will give me anything when I tell the truth. What can I do? What can you do? You ask what you can do? cried Sergei, coming close to him. Work. That's what you can do. You must work. Work. Yes, I know that myself, but where can I find work? How would you like to chop wood for me? I wouldn't refuse to do that, but in these days, even skilled woodcutters find themselves sitting without bread. Will you come and chop wood for me? Yes, sir, I will. Very well, we'll soon find out. Sergei hastened along, rubbing his hands. He called his cook out of the kitchen. Here, Olga, he said, take this gentleman into the woodshed and let him chop wood. The scarecrow of a beggar shrugged his shoulders as if in perplexity and went irresolutely after the cook. It was obvious from his gait that he had not consented to go and chop wood because he was hungry and wanted to work, but simply from pride and shame and because he had been trapped by his own words. It was obvious too that his strength had been undermined by vodka and that he was unhealthy and did not feel the slightest inclination for toil. 
What did you understand from this? Well, for starters, the advocate seems to be quite a gentleman, right? Let me explain further. So we came across Sergei, who is a well-to-do advocate. One day, a beggar came to his door and he was wearing a fawn-colored tattered overcoat. He had dull, drunken eyes and red spots on his cheeks, which were probably due to too much exposure to sun. Now this beggar said that he had been a village school teacher, but he had lost his job. Also, he hadn't eaten anything since three days and he didn't have just enough to pay for lodging. He goes on to mention that it was a year now since he had been jobless. Now, Sergei was an observant man. As he looked at the beggar, he recalled that he had seen him the other day in another street. There, the beggar had said that he was a student who had been expelled. Obviously, Sergei was angry with the beggar for telling a shameless lie. So he threatened to call the police and have him arrested for trying to cheat people. He admitted that he had been telling lies to make people take pity on him. In fact, he had been a singer in a Russian choir and had lost his job because of his drinking habit. Now, he didn't have any work to do and consequently, he had no way to support himself. And that was what forced him to beg. On hearing his story, Sergei told him that he must work to earn a living. So the advocate offered him the task of chopping wood, to which the beggar agreed. Then Sergei called to his cook, whose name was Olga, and asked her to lead the beggar to the woodshed and let him chop wood. He was weak and unhealthy from the influence of alcohol and had absolutely no inclination for hard work. So, do you think Sergei will be able to change the ways of the beggar? For that, we need to read further to find out more. Tutormate. For more amazing video lectures, download the free app on the Apple App Store or Google Play Store.